Welcome back to This Week in Bevy, where we cover what's happening in the Bevy engine ecosystem. If you are unaware, Bevy is a game engine written in Rust that heavily features the ECS or Entity Component System pattern. This week, the Bevy Foundation was announced, which has a nice little new navigational item in the menu here. And several talks were given at the unofficial Bevy Game Dev Meetup number two. If you're interested in some of the deeper magic going on inside of Bevy this week, Bevy PTR, or Bevy Pointer, got some great new docs. And the computational complexity of different input detection methods is now documented. Bevy Dev Tools started getting code filled in with the FPS Overlay plugin. And the set of gizmos available to use also grew with the addition of 3D grids and line joints. An interesting new query pattern was merged in join, which helps solve for cases in which you want to process two queries separately, but also want to process the intersection of them. And finally, we also got a rotation 2D type for rotating 2D vectors. This is very similar to the quaternion type for rotating 3D vectors, but now we have an official solution to rotating in 2D. Now onto the biggest news of the week, the Bevy Foundation now exists. The TLDR mission statement is we exist to develop Bevy and teach people how to use it. The Bevy logo, website, and GitHub organization have now been transferred to the foundation. And meeting minutes and other documentation is also available. Also notable is that this structure seems to align the Bevy Foundation with the community, which is great to see. And of course, Bevy has applied for 501c3 public charity status, and its positioning currently means that contributions financially from individual people, not just companies, matters. The second Bevy community meetup happened on a live stream on YouTube and included about three talks. First, we had Sudoku Pi and learned about the custom UI implementation they used. There's an accompanying blog post for this as well, so you can watch the talk, read the blog post for more context, and then check out Sudoku Pi on the Mac App Store. Next, there was a talk about Bevy Animation Graph, which of course has its own YouTube video showing off this work. It's important to note, given last week's animation graph work, that this animation graph is currently separate from the animation graph that was merged last week. The third talk was about building a widget library with Bevy UI. This UI library, which was open sourced later in the week under Sickle UI, has a number of devlogs on YouTube and is now available to check out, although is not released on crates.io. And finally, as always, Alice's merge train is a rundown of the status of current PRs at a maintainer level and is available over on Mastodon. And first off for the showcases today, we've got a custom particle implementation. This implementation uses instance meshes and the option for custom shaders. The color position, scale, and rotation are controlled from the CPU. The author mentions that this was expanded from the instance to mesh example, which I believe means this shader instancing example. In the past, Valve has released a paper explaining how they made Team Fortress True look like Team Fortress 2. This showcase is a bevy standard material extension implementing the look of Team Fortress 2. BITT, or the Bevy Integration Testing Tool, is an integration testing toolkit for Bevy, and the author is doing their master's thesis about automated testing in games. There was a short survey posted in Discord, and the sample size ended up being 19 people. So I'll leave the results to the thread itself. Link, as always, on the website. Bevy App Compute is a plugin to aid in writing compute shaders. And Bevy Sly Compute aims to provide an easy way to access data created or modified on the GPU back in the app world. This showcase actually forks Bevy to extend as bind group to get this editor behavior to occur. There's some good discussion about this approach and how it could work in the future in the Discord thread, so go check that out as well. Goat Herd is a reverse tower defense isometric platformer about herding goats. This was made for the Acerola Jam Zero, which I believe is the first Acerola game jam. It is playable on itch.io as you can see here, so go check it out. This next update comes from Mastodon. This adorable Animal Crossing style world navigation has gotten a number of updates over on Mastodon this week, so go check out the threads at their profile. Links on the website as usual. This football net was implemented using Rapier 3D and got some more updates later in the week. Nagin and Go Conquer are both Android apps shipped by the same group. Nagin is educational fun aimed at kids while Go is, well, Go. They're working on a third game and hope to release on iOS as well in the future. These fun procedurally generated columns were generated using Bevy 0.13. And as you can see at the top, you can do a little bit of drawing. And after you're done drawing, the columns will expand on top of that. This many trees example has 18 trees per wall, 30,000 triangles per tree, a 20 by 20 maze, which means 200 walls, which means 3,600 trees for a total of 10.6 million triangles. The Discord thread includes a great comment that talks about rendering performance in general, as well as performance in Bevy specifically. There's a whole bunch of other context in this thread, which got pretty long. So if you're interested in GPU rendering performance, definitely go give it a read. 
This maze building algorithm shows off a hex grid, but it can actually generalize to any n greater than two grid. And next up, this from scratch chess engine makes the author's first bevy project. It's actually their first Rust program as well. They use bit boards to represent the board state. A bit board is a U64 with one bit per square and a min max alpha beta pruning algorithm that searches for the best move. It's playable on the web as you can see here. And in general, I'm just not that good at chess. This showcase is one year's worth of work into a real-time strategy game. Currently implemented features include click and drag unit selection and deselection, height mapped terrain, a custom collision system with hard surfaces, such as buildings and terrain, and soft surfaces such as units, trees, and other shapes. Pathfinding and location finding for groups of units is also implemented. Future goals for this game include the addition of multiplayer, Lua scripting, and an editor. The game has been designed for this extension using custom commands, which you can now also find documented in the Bevy Cheatbook. The graphics and logic have already been split into separate crates, which should help the multiplayer implementation. Throwing a bunch of cubes onto a surface is a pretty classic early Bevy app. This one also includes camera movement and wavy terrain. Health is a seven day roguelike challenge submission that's been updated since the contest. It's available to play on itch.io. Beware, you do have to have a Windows machine to play it. That's why I'm only showing you images here rather than the actual gameplay. I was able to make it to level five after 2,901 turns. So you can say that I did get a little distracted playing it. This memory game is a short-term memory game built using Bevy UI and Bevy tweening. It's available on the Mac App Store for iPhone and iOS devices. This infinite procedurally generated destructible world with random enemies and random loot is playable on itch.io. It was a seven day roguelike challenge submission and is pretty similar to other roguelikes in terms of its gameplay. I really do love the color scheme and the procedurally generated dungeons that came out of this though. Pet is a desk pet, similar in effect to the desk toy example we saw last week with some built-in behaviors such as crawling across the bottom of your screen and jumping. Project Harmonia is a life simulation game. The core gameplay will be similar to other games in the genre. The player creates virtual people, places them in houses, and helps to direct and satisfy their desires. This demo shows off an automated door opening when characters approach. It does have its own projects thread in the Bevy Discord server, so definitely go participate in that if you find this interesting. Bevy Motion GFX is a motion graphics creation tool, which is something that I'm very interested in. It's highly inspired by Motion Canvas and MNM, and is generally used for the creation of motion graphics. In Bevy motion graphics, all vector graphics are rendered using Velo. Velo, of course, is the experimental GPU compute centric 2D renderer that can be used as the backend for Xylem. This is done using the minimal Bevy Velo renderer. And one of the most interesting features that I found is support for animating typist. Typist, of course, is a latex competitor or a LaTeX competitor, depending on your persuasion, also written in Rust which means that Bevy Motion Graphics comes with a compiler that compiles typist content into SVG, which can then be rendered with Velo. Observers are a draft PR to generalize ECS reactivity. And oct trees are a tree data structure in which each internal node has exactly eight children. Oct trees are most often used to partition a three-dimensional space by recursively subdividing it into eight octants. This demo shows off a custom skip oct tree structure, which combined enable functionality like get nearest entities to a point. And that brings us into the crate updates. This is Magic Light 0.7, we'll call it plus. Bevy Magic Light 2D is a 2D shading, lighting, and shadow implementation. The 0.7 release brings Bevy Magic Light 2D up to date with Bevy 0.13 support, and the tile map branch includes tile map support, which is what we're seeing here. It's still going to get a bit more polish, but already has a working example, as you can see on screen now. Bevy Defer is a simple asynchronous runtime for executing deferred queries. Bevy Defer uses a single threaded runtime that always runs on Bevy's main thread inside the main schedule. This is ideal for weight heavy or IO heavy tasks, but CPU heavy tasks should not be run here. Lightyear is a full featured networking library to make multiplayer games. This release brings support for multiple transports at the same time, such as web sockets, web transport, UDP, etc. And this is most exciting for the potential to enable cross-play between, say, Steam and directly connected players. Steam networking and Epic Online Services support is planned for the future. Lightyear comes with its own cheat book, as well as some examples. Bevy Tween joins the ranks of Bevy easings and Bevy tweening this week in the ecosystem of animating from one value to another. 
If you're looking for a new tweening crate, check out the differences to decide which works for you. Bevy Picking Tile Map adds a bridging backend for Bevy Mod Picking to enable picking tiles from Bevy ECS Tile Map. This one isn't available on crates.io yet because a custom branch for Bevy ECS Tile Map is used to support Bevy 0.13. That's it for the crate releases this week. Let's get into dev logs. Untold Dawn is a MUD built with Bevy in headless mode, proving that you don't actually need Bevy's rendering capabilities to build a fun game. Some GPU particle-based research focusing on Bevy Hanabi is part one of a series that is really interesting to dive into the inner workings of Bevy Hanabi. If you're interested in GPU particles, definitely go give it a read. And finally, we talked about Sickle UI earlier in our overview. This is the widget library that was open sourced after the Bevy unofficial meetup number two. There's also a bunch of dev logs on YouTube. So if you're interested in how this came about, definitely go check them out. Finally, the Bevy cheap book got a huge update to its programming chapter. The Bevy cheap book, in my opinion, is one of the staples of the ecosystem. And there are updates here to queries, building custom commands, building plugins without a struct, and the ECS itself. The Bevy cheap book is supported through GitHub sponsors, which you can find a link to right on the homepage. As always, we've got the full list of pull requests that were merged this week. We covered a lot of them in the overview, for example, the rotation 2D, but there are some that we didn't cover, such as the new scale around center function on bounding volumes, which includes AABBs, which are axis aligned bounding boxes. If you're looking to contribute, there's a number of pull requests opened this week, some of which will need review. Pull down the branches, see if the functionality works for you and let people know on the PR. If you're looking to get a little bit more in depth, we've also got a list of the issues that were opened this week. Solving some of these will need more involved work, such as creating a new reproduction. Many times in here, there is documentation or new example work that needs to be done, such as this example for joining queries. We covered joining queries in the overview, so you could go check out that PR and then come to this issue with an example that could close this issue. That's it for this week. I'm off to Rust Nation UK next week to give a talk. So if you're there, I'll see you there. And otherwise I'll catch you in the next video. Have a great rest of your week.